testing, testing. Can you hear me? Come on, can we give one more praise to the person that matters who is in the room? The King of all glory, Jesus Christ, the Father and the Holy Spirit. We worship you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. All glory, all praise, all honor is yours, Lord. It is you, Jesus, the Lion of Judah, the Lamb of God. We worship you, Jesus. We are here for you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Hey, you can be seated. You can be seated. Welcome. First off, we would just love to say, if you're new in this house, a big, big welcome to you. We love you and uh, we believe that God has something for you today. And I'll start off by saying this. I'm not here to give a nice message today. I'm not here to, um, I'm here, of course, to bring the word, to bring the sermon. But by the grace of God, and I ask and I pray through the, the power and the Spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, that you would actually meet Jesus today. Because it's about having a daily encounter with Jesus every single day. You see, Jesus has daily bread. He says, he says in, in the Lord's Prayer, Father, give us your daily bread. And can I tell you what the daily bread is? It is the bread of life Himself, Jesus Christ. And what matters here today is not how, how inspired you were. It's not how good of a sermon you might say it was a great sermon. No, it's that you meet and encounter the bread of life, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm just going to pray. We honor you, Jesus. You're the reason why we're here, Lord. Holy Spirit, I ask, I invite, I don't command, I can't tell, but I ask you that you would make Jesus real to us today. That you would give us a revelation here today of your Son and of your heart, Father. I ask by your grace, would you use me as a vessel, Lord? Ignite my own heart, Lord, to look at you and see you rightly, God, and to burn in truth and righteousness for you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you are here, and that, Lord, we, de we declare we're not here for a great service. Lord, we are here to meet with you and do business with you, Father God. And all God's people said, Amen and Amen. Come on, can we just give God some more praise? Thank you, Jesus. We love you. We love you. So obviously, for those who don't know, we're called Freedom Center. And our lead pastors, our Pastor Neil and Grace, are actually away at the moment with some of our other pastors, Pastor James and Steph, and a bit of a crew. And they're actually in New Zealand at our sister church over there having a conference. Um, so they're not here. But on behalf of them, we will, they just want to say a big God bless you. You are welcome and we love you. And for those who don't know, we've been going along this series and it's called Nameless and Faceless. And for those who do, do not know, Nameless and Faceless is a, a call that God has put on the leadership's hearts to go out into the world, go out into Victoria, go out into Melbourne, into the city and into the suburbs to bring one thing and one thing only, to have the name of Jesus uplifted and glorified. So you're here, we're here today, you're sitting under Freedom Center. But what we feel God calling us is God calling us to, to follow the Lamb, to follow Jesus and to invite everyone else who wants to be a part of this movement of seeing Jesus Christ uplifted and His name glorified to come along. It's not about a name of a church. It's not about a ministry. It's about the ministry of Jesus Christ. And it's about His name being uplifted and glorified. So I'd like just to read one thing that the pastor sent about nameless and faceless. Our description, in these final hours before he appears again, Jesus is building an army of reformers and revivalists that are the nameless and faceless, a people purely motivated by fear, first love, who are in humility, fear God and follow the Lamb. And it's a God thing, a holy thing. Inspired by the unnamed saints in Revelation 14, our heart is simple, to gather people whose sole desire is to see the name and face of Jesus made known until the earth is filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as we eagerly wait to not only see a generation, but be the generation whose reward is His revealing, who seek no recognition, but His recognition, whose gain is His glory. 
nameless and faceless, has been birthed to invite all believers to unite in intercession, worship and evangelism. All throughout our state, at organised gatherings and planned to reach every area. So basically to sum it up, what are we saying? Follow me. The call is actually what Jesus said is, follow me. And we need to understand, today I want to touch about a topic called Jesus, where did Jesus go when he came? He went to a lost and broken world. And we heard the description that we're going to reach these areas, we're going to reach our suburb, we're going to reach this state through intercession, prayer, and everyone's like, amen. But as soon as we sometimes hear evangelism, we clock out. We think prayer and worship, that's me. But when it comes to outreach or evangelism, something happens where we clock out. Something happens where we get this this deception from the enemy to say, that's not my calling. That's for the evangelist. And I wrote this down here. The devil has tried to mitigate the bride, the church, by deceiving her into believing that being unashamed about your love for Jesus and telling people about the love and mercy of God is evangelism. As soon as people hear witness, outreach, to go out to the lost, there's a cut of hearing, a deafness, shut off of conviction, and the snake, the serpent, justifies it with Scripture saying, that's not your calling and that's not your gift. The enemy is smart in deceiving the church to say, hey, that's not your calling and that's not your gift. That's for the evangelist. He's smart to say, hey, you don't have the charisma. That's not your personality. But can I tell you, this is what the Holy Spirit is doing in today's church, the church. And I don't just mean this church, the church of Christ. He's doing this. The Lamb is leading us to the throne of grace, to the heart of the Father. From there, we will see God's heart for the lost and the broken, where we are called to be love and light. Jesus said, be the light of the world, be love. We're not calling you to be an evangelist, we're calling you to shine Jesus. How many of us know that the Holy Spirit is eager for us to just shine Jesus? To be love. To be love. But in order to be love, we first need to receive love. And what's happened is, it's it's, it's like, and maybe I'm speaking to one person here today, and this is what the Lord has revealed to me, that when we talk about outreach and evangelism, there's a numbness. We become numb. There's no conviction anymore. But you see, if we can just truly follow the Lamb where He went, which was to the lost and to the broken, we will understand, we will see the heart of God for the lost. And can I tell you, God's overriding will is that no man shall perish. No man shall perish. And in preparing this sermon and preparing this message, I was just spending time with the Lord and I saw one imagery. And the imagery was, put your hand up if you know John the Baptist. And I saw his head on a platter. And I thought, wow, that's pretty brutal. I saw John the Baptist's head on the platter. But what was that meaning? And that's what we're going to step into. Everyone say, I receive. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can we get the first scripture, please? And this is, so just some context. Jesus has just been preaching. And what, what happens, he actually gets, he's been rejected now. So before this, he's been rejected by the Pharisees. He's been rejected by his brothers. They've rejected him. And now we pick up the story. At that time, Herod, the te- who wants to pronounce that word for me? There we go, Tetrarch. Heard the report about Jesus and said to his servants, This is John the Baptist. He is risen from the dead, and therefore these powers are at work in him. For Herod had laid hold of John and bound him and put him in prison for the sake of the Herodias, his brother Philip's wife. Because John said to him, It is not lawful for you to have her. And although he wanted to put him to death, he feared the multitude because they counted him as a prophet. But when Herod's birthday was celebrated, the daughter of Herodias danced before them and it pleased Herod. Therefore, he promised with an oath to give her whatever she might ask. So she, having been prompted by her mother, said, give me John the Baptist's head here on a platter. And the king was sorry. Nevertheless, because of the oaths and because of those who sat with him, he commanded it to be given to her. So he sent and had John beheaded in prison. And his head was brought on a platter and given to the girl, and she brought it to her mother. Then his disciple came and took it away, and the body and buried it, and went and told Jesus. 
So let's just hold there. Can you imagine that? At that time, Jesus, we need to understand Jesus was God, but he was man. And I don't know about you. How would you have felt in you as yourself when you've lost somebody and you've just found out that your cousin's been beheaded? Can you imagine the sadness in your heart? Can you imagine how you would have felt when you found that your cousin has been beheaded? The grief, the sorrow as a man. You see, Jesus, he felt everything that we felt. He went through everything that we went through. So can you imagine the sorrow and the grief our Lord would have had to see his cousin head chopped off? We'll keep going. When Jesus heard it, he departed from there by a boat to a deserted place by himself. So can you imagine? He just wants to get away. He just wants to get away and spend some alone time with the Father. There's two reasons here as well, yeah? So he wanted to get away and spend time with the Father, but he also got away because it wasn't his time to be killed. You see, Herod, Herod, Herod wanted to kill Jesus as well. He heard the reports. So two reasons. He has grief and he wants to be alone, but also it was not his time, so he goes away. So he seeks a deserted place. Can you imagine the hardship he was going through? But when the multitudes heard it, they followed him on foot from the cities. And when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude and he was moved with compassion. Compassion. And you see, that's the question I have to ask today. Do you have compassion? Is your heart moved with compassion for the lost? When you look at somebody, are you moved with compassion? Or do you just see duty? You see, we understand the call as Lord, as He says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. We understand that Jesus is calling us to be a witness, but do you see it? Do you feel the compassion of God for the lost? And it's like a lot of times we say, you know the Saviour, but you don't know the Lord. But I feel like the Holy Spirit saying, hey, you know the Lord, but you're remembering the Saviour. Because it's through the compassion of the Saviour, you remembering that Jesus gave His life for you, that you would live unashamed for Him. You see, the Holy Spirit has come to reveal the heart of the Father. And the heart of the Father is that no man shall perish. That all who are lost will be saved. And Jesus did nothing outside what His Father told Him to do. And can I tell you, Jesus came with one mission, and that mission was to show you God's heart and bring you back from sin, out of the pit that you were in, out of the kingdom of darkness. He took you, He translated you into the kingdom of His Son, which is love. Love. God is love. And I feel like there's just going to be this shake-up today and God just wants to impart His heart of love to us again where we understand duty, but we're numb. Where Jesus was in His most hardest times. He had hardship. He lost His beloved cousin, John. And He just wanted to be alone. Yet in His hardest times, He saw compassion. He saw a multitude and He went. How many of us in hardship, we don't, we don't choose compassion, but we let the hardship actually numb us? Where the Lord's saying, hey, even in your hardship, I have grace, I have strength in order for you to not actually just stay in the hardship, but also see through the eyes and the, the, the heart of God, which is love. We'll keep reading. When it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, this is a deserted place and the hour is already late. Send the multitudes away, that they may go into the villages and buy themselves food. So the multitudes are following him now. And the disciples are saying, let's send them away. It's late. It's a deserted place. But Jesus said to them, they do not need to go away. And you might find yourself in a deserted place. Guess what the Lord says to you? You do not need to go away. I will not leave you here. I will not leave you here. You find yourself in a deserted place. The Lord is saying, I will not send you away. I do not cast you away. They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. And they said to him, we have here only five loaves and two fish. He said, bring them here to me. Then he commanded the multitudes to sit down on the grass and he took the five loaves and the two fish. And this is the key, looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke. What did Jesus do? He looked up to heaven. What was he doing when he looked up to heaven? He was looking at the Father. And I believe through the revelation of the Holy Spirit, 
He's looking up and he's seeing the Father's heart for the multitude. He's seeing the Father's heart and the smile. The smile of the Father saying, this is why you're here. And the, the bread that he gets and he breaks, it's twofold. Jesus was the broken body. He is the bread, which is the forgiveness, the compassion, the mercy of God. So he breaks it. Say, hey, I broke my body for you. But he looks up and in his hardship, he remembers, this is why you sent me, Father. Thank you, Father. This is why you sent me, Father. To love, to see. Because can I, can I tell you something? When man disobeyed God and was kicked out of Eden, out of the garden, God's heart broke. And he's longing to come back into a relationship with his children. So Jesus came to what? Heal God's heart. And bring us back to the Father. And he gave the loaves to the disciples, and the disciples gave it to the multitudes. So they all ate and were filled, and they took up 12 baskets full of the fragments that remained. Now those who had eaten were about 5,000 men beside women and children. Immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And I just want to camp here for one second. You see, he looks up to heaven, there's multiplication. It says that there's 12 fragments, there's 12 baskets left over. And what I believe that God is saying with the 12 baskets, it represents a new covenant, it represents the 12 tribes, but it also represents for the disciples to remember, hey, fish represents the mission. It represents fishing, fishing for souls. It represents going out there, but he gives them bread as well to say, hey, don't go out just to the fish out of duty, out of mandate, but you need to carry this gospel. You need to carry this message with bread, with compassion, with my love. Love never fails. Love endures. Love never gives up. And I feel like the Lord saying, hey, I've got a basket for you today. It's not just of duty. It's not just of fishing men, but it's with bread. It's with love. It's with grace. It's with mercy. My Holy Spirit wants to move in love of my Father. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he sent away the multitudes. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, Is it a ghost? And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to be with Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried out saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, oh, you of little faith, why do you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. When they had crossed over, they came to the land of Gennesaret, which is a, a Gentile land. And when the, that man of that place recognized him, they sent out all into the surrounding region, brought him to all who were sick, and begged him that they might only touch the hem of his garment, and as many as touched it were made perfectly well. You see, this is a continuation. It says, so he's now sent the multitudes away. He goes to be with the Father. It says the fourth watch, which is between 3 and 6 a.m., he sees his disciples sitting there, still compassion in his heart. He spent time with the Father. He sees that they're troubled. He walks on the sea and he says, hey, come and walk with me. Is it a ghost? They're afraid. He says, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. And he calls Peter to himself. Yes, he rebukes Peter because he's not having full faith. He says, hey, don't doubt. I've already showed you who I am. But he has compassion. And then from there, he goes into a, a Gentile city and it says, all who came touched the hem of his garment and were healed. Can you see the compassion of God? Can you feel the compassion of the Lord, of your Savior for the lost? And this is what moved with compassion means. It says this, to be moved with deep compassion or pity. The Greeks regarded the bowels as the place where strong and powerful emotions originated. The Hebrews regarded as the place where tender mercies and feelings of affection, compassion, sympathy, and pity originated. 
Are your bowels moved with compassion? Are you moved with compassion? Or are you numb? Are you numb to when you see somebody looking down the road, when you see somebody who doesn't know the Lord, is there any conviction or are you numb? Because you see a lot of the times, and I understand we say, don't be led of our feelings. And that's true. We shouldn't be led of our feelings. But there's almost been a blocking of our feelings because there's been this blocking of our feelings where we're not feeling anymore and we're just being like a robot, a soldier, where God is saying, I want you to feel. I want you to see. And I want you to feel my heart for people. And the Lord wants to show you his heart today. He wants to prick you today. He wants to say, hey, I want to show you my heart. Better yet, I want to show you the Father's heart. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Next scripture. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Every disease, every sickness. But when He saw the multitudes, He was moved with compassion. He was moved with compassion. He was moved with compassion. Are you moved with compassion? Or do you just see duty? Do you say, hey, that's not my gift? Where God is saying, I want to stir you up today, church, to be moved with the compassion of my heart. Because when you look at somebody, you don't see their religion. You don't see their gender, but you see them as lost and you see them as my son. Are you moved with compassion? I feel the glory of the Father saying, hey, we need to be moved with compassion. You understand the mandate. You understand the commission. But do you move in compassion? The Lord wants to break numbness today. He wants to break the numbness. He wants to break the lies, the deception of the enemy that says this isn't my calling. When God is saying, hey, I've called you to shine. I've called you to love. Do you not remember that I've gave my life when you didn't love me? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Then He said to His disciples, The harvest truly is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send our labourers into this harvest. So we see the Lord is saying, Hey, can you see what I see? And being a nameless and faceless people is following the Lamb where He would go. And where did He go? He went to the lost. He went to the broken. He went to the downcast. He went to the demon possessed. He went to those who were sick, those who had been oppressed by the enemy. And He says, hey, to His disciples, hey, can you see? Can you see? And what's He saying? Not can you see with your eyes, but can you see with the heart of God that I came to set the captives free, that I came to show the love of the Father, that God Almighty is love. He is love and love casts out all fear. Love never gives up. Love endures. What happens is we see the harvest, but sometimes we say, man, that's too much. And as a labourer, we go and we get tired because we do the duty, but we forget the love. And we understand that love never fails. Love doesn't get tired. Love never gives up. And when we move in love, that's when we'll see the gift of the Holy Spirit. Paul says, desire the gifts, but pursue love. How many of us want the power? We wanted the power where God's saying, forget the power, see love first. Because it's in the love of God that washes away the sin, washes away the fear. And the Holy Spirit sees a heart that is full of love and says, yes. There's no pride in love. There's no selfishness in love. God is love. God is love. Let's keep reading. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And do you know what I love? Because in this chapter, He's called His disciples. So He's saying, hey, look at the harvest. Look at the harvest. Look at your duty. But don't forget bread. Don't forget bread. Don't forget bread. Don't forget bread, mercy, compassion. And from this place, what does He say? But go rather to first what? The lost sheep. We need to see them as first lost. Not see them as having um, a thing on their head. Not as their religion. Not as a, a, as a, a, a gender. 
not of, not, we don't look at them as behaviour. We look at them as lost. The Father doesn't look at them at what they do. He says, I look at them as lost. And from this place, He says to His disciples, if you can see them as lost, if you can see them with bread, I tell you, in this place of power, of love, now go and cast out demons. Now, from this place of seeing the Father's heart and understanding it's through compassion, now go and cleanse the lepers. Now go and cast out demons, raise the dead, heal the sick. Freely you've received bread, disciples. Church, freely you've received bread, so freely give it. Give the compassion of the Lord. Give the mercy of God. Forget the duty if you don't remember the bread. The Lord is saying, I have a basket here today and it's of my Spirit that I'm not just calling you to fish for fishing's sake. I'm calling you to fish out of my heart as the Father through the power of the Holy Spirit that brings the love of God. So many people want to see miracles, want to see the power of God. God says, first love. And from this place, you will see the miracles. You will see the power of the Holy Spirit. But we need to first understand the Father's heart, which is the love. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. It wasn't that God saw and Jesus said, I'll do it out of duty. No, He saw the love that God had for us and He says, I will go in that love. And it was that love for Him and the Father, that love for you and me that took Him all the way to the cross. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Break our hearts or what breaks yours. Will we follow the the, will we follow the lamb? Let's keep reading. It's, It's gonna get better. However, Jesus did not permit him, but said to him, Go home, tell your friends, and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you, and how he has had what? Compassion on you. What's the Lord saying? What is the Lord saying? I'm not asking you to go and stand on this on the street and preach. I'm not telling you to go to the shopping centre and preach to everyone. I am asking you to go back to your friends, to go back to your family and tell them how I have had compassion on you. How I have had compassion of you. How compassionate He is. How merciful He is. I'm not telling you to be an evangelist. I'm telling you to tell people about my compassion. I see it, the Father. Do you know why He looks? He looks at a mercy seat and He looks at us and He sees the compassion of God. The compassion of God. The compassion of God. The compassion, the heart. I'm not looking for a good sermon. I don't want to inspire you today. I don't want you to feel motivated. I want you to see God's heart. I want you to receive the heart of the Father, how much He loves the lost, how much He loves the broken, how much He loved you and how much He loves you. I'm not trying to set you ablaze today. No, I'm trying to get you to see God's heart. By His grace, Holy Spirit, touch hearts today. He longs, He longs. Let's keep going. Thank you, Lord. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed in Him because of the word of the woman who testified. You see, this is the woman who was caught at the well. So she's at the well. She goes to the Samaritan woman. She's there. Jesus has an interaction with her. Her life's forever changed, forever changed. And just before this, Jesus, the disciples come back and say, Hey, have you eaten? Have you eaten? And I love His response. I have bread. I have food that you don't know about. I have a bread and I have a food that you don't know about and you don't understand. My bread is to do the will of the Father. My bread is to show the love of the Father. And I'm telling you, church, there is bread for you today. There is bread for you today. It's not by power. It's not by might. It's by the Spirit, says the Lord. The Holy Spirit. The compassion of God. I have bread. Yes. Bread. And that's to do my will. The will of the Father. 
And that's what we're calling you to. Jesus is saying, follow me and I will show you the will of the Father. He says to His disciples, hey boys, follow me and I will show you what it is to know the Father. Don't do this out of your zeal. Don't do this out of your fervency. Do it out of the love of the Father. Thank you, Jesus. And God is saying to you, testify. Testify. Testify how I have had compassion on you. How I saved you. When you were lost, when you were broken, when you didn't know God, think about it. God's saying to you personally today, I am asking you, testify. Testify. Just tell someone how I have had compassion on you. And do you know the greatest thing? And this is nameless and faceless right here. It says this. So when the Samaritans had come to him, they urged him to stay with them and he stayed with them two more days. And many more believed because of his own word. Then they said to the woman, yes, this is the key. What do they say? We don't, we don't believe because of what you said. We believe ourselves because we know indeed he is the Christ, the Saviour of the world. And that's nameless and faceless, where it's not even about your testimony anymore. It's not about you, but they turn around and say, hey, I don't believe because of what you said anymore. I believe because I've met Him. It has nothing to do with you. Your recognition, my face, it's all about His grace, His name, His spirit, His kingdom, His power being established on the earth. Nothing to do with you. All to do with Him. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And buddy invites us. He says, Co labor, come, follow me. I want to show you. And this, the nameless and faceless isn't so that you don't have a name or a faceless. No, no, no. God sees you. You have a name. He sees you. You have a face. But to everyone else, you don't seek a face. You don't seek a name. You're seeking one name to be known. You're seeking one glory to be revealed. And that's the glory of the Father, the hope of glory, Christ in you. Come on, feel the Lord. Let's go. Let's keep reading. Thank you. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are well known to God and I also trust are well known in your consciousness. Keep reading. Okay, I'll get it myself. It's all good. You know what Paul says in 2 Corinthians? He says this, For the love of Christ compels me. For the love of God, it compels me. It compels me. It compels me. It takes me. It constrains me. It pulls me. It compels me. I am a prisoner of His love. It takes me. It causes me to go, to step out, to not worry about what my calling is. Your calling is to follow Jesus. Don't worry about your assignment. What's my place in the body? You are His body. He is the head. Shine Him. Make Him known. Don't overwrite your calling and get it confused with His will. His will is that no man shall perish. His will is sanctification. His will is that all men will come to the knowledge of Him. We are all His body and we're called. We are called. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Can we all stand? I read what compel means. Compel means this, to hold together, to grip tightly. The word describes people who are afflicted with various diseases and pains or paralyzed by fear. Crowds hemming to Christ in an army surrounding Jerusalem, soldiers arresting Jesus 
and of the Word, there is a sense of constraint, a tight grip that prevents an escape. The love of Christ leaves us with no choice except to live our lives unashamed and boldly for Him. Are you constrained? Are you compelled for the love of God? Do you walk down the street and do you ever once think about somebody that doesn't know God? And this is in love and this is in grace. I feel the Lord say, hey, today I'm going to reveal again my love to you. I see the Father standing here wanting to hug you and wanting to touch your heart so that He would release the compassion of God. There is perfect love that casts out fear. So if you have fear to share, God says, I want to touch you with my love. Are you numb? Are you deceived into thinking it's not your role? We're all called to be the light. We're all called to be a witness. We're all called to testify. We're all filled with the Holy Spirit of God. You are the temple of God. Christ lives in you, not just for you, but for the world. So what we're going to do is this. We're going to open up the altar because I believe by the grace of God and by the Holy Spirit, Jesus is here and He's going to touch your heart. He's going to touch your heart today and you're going to come into an encounter with His perfect love today that's going to cast out all fear. So as the band sings, please come. If you need that touch, if you need the compassion again, if you've gone cold, if you've gone numb, you come as you feel led. God has had compassion. God has compassion on His children. And if you're new in this place today, God has had compassion on you. The reason why you're here today is because God has compassion for you. He's been watching you. He's been watching you live a life without Him. And the truth is, you were created by God for God. He is your author. He is your creator. He's the one that needed you together in your mother's womb. He's the one that planted all the purpose that's in your life in you as you were being birthed in your mother's womb. He knows you. He knows every hair you have on your head. He knows what you think before you even think it. And if you're here this morning new, I need to tell you, you're here not by chance, but because God has drawn you here. God has drawn you here today because He has compassion on you. He sees His child that doesn't have Him a part of their life, that's living life without God a part of it. That is so, that, that makes God's heart cry. God is a Father. He is a Father and He loves His children. And He doesn't want to see you living this life, walking alone, doing life in your own strength anymore. Let today be the day that you say yes to Jesus. Let today be the day that you start walking and having a relationship with your Father. The reason that you're even born is because of God. The reason that you're here is because of God. Your purpose is in God. If you're thinking every day, if you're thinking, who am I? Why am I here? What is my purpose? What's the purpose of life? You will only ever find that through Jesus, through God. Because He is your creator. He is your maker. And you can't find, you can't find that purpose anywhere else because it's not found in anything else. It's in God alone your Creator, your Maker, the author of your life. So life won't make sense until God is in it. So let today be the day. If you're a new person in this house, this moment's about you. This moment is for you. God has had compassion on you, watching His child do life on their own. And He's calling you and He's drawing your heart to Him today. Let today be the day that you say yes and amen to the reason that you were even born. So Jordan's going to, whoever's new here, Jordan is going to lead you in prayer and to invite the Father into your life. Amen. Amen. Yes, just as Sandy so beautifully put, if that's you today, if you're new in this house, or if you're, if you're wondering who's this Jesus, who's this person that um, we're talking about that gives us this compassion, that has this spirit for us to have compassion. Well, first He had compassion on you. He had compassion for you. It says in Hebrews that it was the joy set before Him that led Him to the cross. And that joy that was set before Him was you and I. Whether you know Him or not, that joy was you. That joy was you. It says that as He was beaten on His back, wounds on His back, carrying this heavy cross to the top of this hill, the only thing that got Him through it, the thing that pushed Him through, 
was His compassion, was His joy for you. So that you might say yes. So that you might say, Jesus, I believe who you say you are. I submit my life to you and I want to follow you. So if that's you today, church, I just might get you all just to stand because we're going to pray with them together. With every head bowed and every eyes closed, if that's you today and you just want to say yes to Jesus, you want to to say, Jesus, I thank you and I want to step into this life that you have for me. I want to have compassion for people who are hurting. I want to have compassion for those that may have never experienced you before. And if you've experienced him today and, and that's you and you want to say yes, with every eye closed, I just want you to raise your hand and we're just going to say a quick prayer together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Yes, we see your hand. Thank you. Thank you. All right, with your hand still raised, church, we're just going to repeat after me with them. Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus. we love you. And we thank you for your compassion on us. For your compassion on us. I accept you, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. As my Lord and Savior. Forgive me for my sins. Forgive me of my sins. And grant me your grace and mercy. I put my life before you right now. And I say, use me, Lord. Say, use me, Lord. And guide me to walk in your ways, Jesus. Guide me to walk in your ways, Jesus. I pray this in your mighty name. Amen. 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 Round of applause if you said that for the first time.